organs of government. There are three organs of government and each of them has branches. We have the legislature. I'm going to say them bit by bit. I'm going to speed run it. We have legislative, we have the judiciary, we have the executive. I'm going to start with legislation. Under the legislature, we have two types. We have unicamera and we have bicamera. Unicamera legislature has to do with a one house legislature. Mind me, before I continue, I have to tell you what legislature is in government. Legislature is the body that makes law in government. The other arms, which is executive and judiciary, executive, they implement. Executive, the, the written law by the leg legislative, they send it out. Why the executive, they are the pronouncement of the judgment. That is, they concur to the judiciary, executive. So let's see the legislature. We have unicamera and we also have bicamera. Unicamera has to do with a one house legislature where bicameral has to do with a two-house legislature. In Nigeria, the legislature practice is bicameral because we have two houses, the upper house and the lower house. We have the house of senate, we have the house of representative. So, legislature is important. Making of law is a serious job. That's why there's two houses. But let's see, the unicameral legislature and the bicameral they have the advantages and disadvantages. Let's start with the one house, which is the camera. Let's say we have the one house, which is uni, meaning one. We have two house. We have two house. That is the bath. This one house is practiced in some country. For example, we have such countries as Ghana, we have Syria alone. Then when we have the countries are practiced by, we have countries like USA, we have Britain, we have Nigeria. And we see one thing about adoption of legislation policy. Legislation policy adoption has to be the influence of the country who colonized. For example, Britain colonized Nigeria. They practice by cameralism. They have two houses. In Britain, we have House of Lord and the House of Common. But in Nigeria, we have House of Senate and House of Reps. Let's see. Unicameralism or one house system. Why is it important? Or what are the characteristics of them? Unicameral government is in quick law and nothing. Instead of it to go for when we come to build discussion of how laws are formed, you see that in the criminal government make it easy for law to be enacted. It's made for quick action. But in by as we learn we want to differentiate them, we see that it's kind of take time. It passed from one desk to another before a house finished and passed to the other house. It takes time. So in the camera government or legislature assist for quick judgment two apart from quick judgments we also have what I refer to as saving of finance for example in a country where you have up to 360 in one of the houses and 109 in another house, calculate the sum. How much will be paid to those high commissioners, ambassadors, senators, commissioners, ministers? The finance used to pay those people is more. But in camera system, the volume of money spent on government officials is reduced. So also have finance management in the camera legislature. Finance, we have management.
Favoritism, nepotism is reduced. Tribalism is also reduced when it comes to unicameral government. The reason for that is unicameral government is used <coughs> is used with government that has small geographical location. That is to say that their landmass is small. Maybe they will have, let's say, 18, 12, 20 states. So instead of you bringing everybody into government, a few selected ones are brought into power. So with that, we have little people in the government. So finance is managed. Also, we have tribalism is not there again because everybody is brought into government. There is no minority and majority, so it is reduced. That is another basic characteristic. Also, we also have the first, let me put it down so that you see it, nepotism. We have tribalism. That's the tall one I just explained just now. So let's see the fourth one. is not used in mismanagement. How do I mean? A lot of people there are involved in the government. Like I said, there is no tyrannical handling of government. Let's say minority oppresses, majority oppress minority. We don't have that in, in camera legislature because there is no tribalism and the people there is properly represented. We can say that unicameral government is a representative government. Whether unicameralism is practice is also representative democracy. Well, this is just what we have under unicameral government. Does this prove that bicameralism is not good? Let's see the bicameralism. Remember, we are still a legislature. Okay? We want to take some of the things or the features of bicameral government. Bicameral government has two houses, which is the House of Senate and the House of Rep. As we have in the unicameral system, whereby fund is managed properly. That does not also state that fund is mismanaged in bicameral government. It only states that a huge sum is displayed for the, for the running of those commissioners and the government. Every, every niche, everybody in the larger range that is bicameral. Let, let me run your mind back to something. I said something that like in camera government, is used in small country, small country which have little geographical landmass. But in a wider range like Nigeria, which have a lot of ethnic groups, smaller ethnic groups, amid the major ones we know, each of them has to be represented. In Nigeria, we have 109 senators. Does it mean that all our money is spent on financing them? No. Because our revenue of the country is large too, so we're able to finance our government. But in this our big landmass, if we're to practice in a camera, do you think it will favor us? It will not. The truth has to be said. Because the people are many and people to handle them has to also be many too. Tribalism, as I said earlier, is not mostly seen in camera, it's seen by camera. Nepotism, yes, favoritism is seen there, but everything that has advantage also has disadvantage. It should be not worthy. So let's get into it now. We say it's made for adequate representation because it, the ethnic groups are many, so are the people who are to be represented have to be many. So everybody is equally represented. But we have to note something that in the camera is more represented. That's why I mentioned 
representative government is mostly in, in camera but this also feature in by camera but not as much as that in in camera two the ch the chambers also makes for check and balance now check and balance is an important aspect of government whereby there is no check and balance and also separation of power let me have that on the board advantage Advantages of the two halves. In brackets, we have by. Advantages of two houses or the by camera house. The first one is check and balance. Check and balance. What does this mean? Why is it an advantage? Well, check and balance has to do with what we get during a separation of power. There are two houses, the higher house and the lower house. When the lower house pass a judgment, the higher house now sit to that judgment and check, or rather, if it was when authority is used, the higher house pass a judgment. Then the lower house check if there's an excess, if there's a lapse, if power is now going to be used to then play the citizen. We see that's when we see check and balance of government. When we go to pre colonial administration, as we learn, we're going to see the importance of check and balance in government. It is very important and detrimental. Two, we want to see that one advantage is age. Strange, right? Age. We see that those in the higher house, they are very old, as in the advanced. The lower house is made up of young people, young administrators. In natural sense, those with those who are age or more advanced have more experience and wealth of understanding, more than the young generation who are in the lower house. So with that work, they are able to run the, the government more efficiently up to date. Because there's balance, there's, there's, um, the standard is high, and at, the other, and at another point, it is based on wisdom. There's civilization and there's wisdom behind it. So you see that it's a balanced system too. It has its own demerit, but it's also a balanced system. Three, interest of the public is carried. Discouraged. The delay in which law is being passed has a benefit. Why? Whereby a law is placed. Because before a bill becomes a law, news about it has been heard by the public. It gives opportunity for the masses to state their own opinion. If the number of people who concur to that decision is small, it will make the people who are making the decision to have a rethink, thereby making a balance. Because the law they are making is not going to be for them. They are serving the public. So they have to cooperate with what the public says to be acceptable. So the interest of the public is carried due to the delay in which laws is being passed from the higher from the lower house to the higher house and before it has settled as a law. We also have reduced workload. Workload is being reduced because the theory of division of labor is for efficiency. So when the lo load is divided between the higher and lower house or two houses, it makes the load reduce. That is to say that a part of making law and implementing it is being done between the two houses. The one, one house take a part and the other has take a part. It makes the workload easier and leads to efficiency. Whereby the two houses are cooperating, they don't compete. It. it makes it to be what efficient and workload is reduced between both of them. Than for one house, when it's one house, it looks like a one man's business. Another aspect is that minority group are carried. 
minority interests minority interests yes in a government system whereby little officials are being taken it tends to be majority because the idea of unicameralism is to be a representative government but most of the times it is in theory not in practical when it comes in practical it ought to be that all interests are carried but it's not practice but in a bicameral system minority interest is carried because most of every state brings a representative those representatives, if they are majority, if they are minority, their interest is being carried out to the last link in government, which is constitu constituency, mm -hmm. whereby the government is divided where, for election purpose. Every street, in fact, to individual, to the chairman of his streets, is being carried out. The interest is being carried out to the last level. So by communalism, it has its own advantages. Yes, it also has its own demerits. But if I go to the demerit, let's see. We spoke about check and balance of power, which I said that is why separation of power is important. Two, we said about age, that the two age varies, that the higher has have more elderly people, while the lower has has young people, which leads to wisdom and also civilization. It works hand in hand. Three, we say interest of the public is carried, whereby a bill is being processed to a law. The public has the opportunity to state their own opinion and their opinion is being carried. Then four, there is reduction of workload because two hazards are involved, so more people to carry out the work. Then lastly I said minority interests are carried because everybody is duly represented from all angles. So now let's see the demerit or disadvantage. Demerit is the critical look of it. The merit of the two house. Or the buy. We have nepotism and coincidentally this is an advantage of unicameralism. We have nepotism or tribalism. Countries that practice bicameralism always have major group. This major group dominates most of the decision because for example, the minority tribes may just come from, let's say, seven states. And we have hosts of 20-something, 20 26 in the hands of majority. What happened? The minority is looked down on. So nepotism and tribalism, before they take godfatherism, favoritism, is gone. It's mostly practiced in two, the two house, the two house or the buy. The two house or the buy system is mostly what practice. But like I said, this is a merit of the new camera. So note, if you're able to know the advantage of either of them, you can study the merit of them. Because one contradicts the other. Remember it's criticism. Two also have Workload, I bring it here again. Remember, it was an advantage, but now I'm taking it as demerit. How does it relate as a demerit? As an advantage, you said it's divided, but you know that it's not actually divided. If it's brought into practice, it's not divided. Reason being that when it's a bicameral government, work is not taken serious. Because if it's a one house, you know that the masses are looking at me 
I'm just the only one there. I'm Minister of Finance here and I'm the Minister. There's no other counterpart. You take your job seriously. But in a bicameral system, things often look lightly because they know that I have an assistant. The assistant look at his own job, lights. Would there be efficiency? No. So the workload is not duly carried out. What about money? Financing of two houses is a very big load on the economy of the country, which makes the people you are serving to earn little finance. They'll be, instead of you serving them, they're the ones now serving you because their revenue, everything is entering your pocket as salary. So, unlike in camera system, by camera system, most of the revenue goes to paying of the people in government, the two houses, the, all the sectors, because they are not too, 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 too. You have to pay everybody other than each of the ministries. You see, a lot of money have been wasted. It's financing. So see that this is a very big demerit, which make some country run away from by cameralism. But not to worry, it's mostly practice, because it's seen as the modern way of handling matters. That's why division of labor is said to be one modern theory that is carried out using of more people, if not at its own disadvantage. Also I have rival or rivalry. What does this mean? A lot of rival of rivalry occurs in both houses. There are a lot of chaos in a, in a buy house because an opinion of one person might not be liked by another person in the other house. And it tends to look, oh, it's because it's in, the, it's in the higher house. That is why he treats us like this. And this affects the way they take, this affects the way they take their work. And this can be detrimental to the people they are serving because it will not go with efficiency. Another demerit is appointment rather than electing. Whereby appointment is done, you don't carry majority's opinion. The public's opinion is not carried out. If it's an electing to be a collective decision, but appointment is a few selected decision. Not everybody's idea is carried out. If that person is tyrannic in nature, once it enter, it will not be in favor of those people who is ruling. So another demerit is that of appointment than electing that to show the public opinion or their view concerning the candidate. Now I've listed five demerits. We have nepotism, we have workload number two. Number three, we have money finance, used in financing them on serving us the money you pay them as salary for government. Four, we have rivalry. And five, we have appointment rather than electing, which I said does not carry majority's opinion due to the personality of the individual. Now let's go to the last aspect of legislature, function. The function of legislature is coined or can be coined from the definition, the basic, or the basis. Functions because they are more than one, okay? Number one, we have law making. Two, we have approval of appointments. Three, they are numerous. We also have them in amendment of constitution. This will be dealt with seriously, very, very seriously. Amendment of Constitution. Since Constitution is a topic on its own, 
also have control of the executive. You see what I said? There's check and balance in legislature. Control of executive. And who are these executives? We soon learn about them. They are numerous. So, so have removal of president, removal of judge. President, stroke, judges, as the case may be. Since we have judiciary function, how does it perform judiciary function? You see that too. Okay, let's now do it. Now, number one, one of the functions, lawmaking. They make law. The two houses see that law is being passed that will govern the, gov the people who are in the government. They see to the day to day activity by passing out law that will regulate the activity rather than people working like nomadics without no king or ruler. They see that law is being passed and law is being maintained. That is where we see that in number five, in number four, we have control of the executive. So they work in hand in hand with this executive. We also see approval of appointments. Whereby this appointment is made, this approval comes from them, the legislature. Approval in other sectors. It might not be necessarily the legislature. We have president or prime minister. As we learn, as we learn in executive, we know what a prime minister is and what a president is. And we have amendment of the constitution. Whereby constitution is amendment, it's not worthy that they are the ones who chairman that affair. Even though the judiciary has a part to play, they are the ones who chan they make the law. The judiciary on the other hand, they implement they interpret the law. That's when we have our judges and our our lawyers. But these are the ones who make the law. So see that legislature is a one is a one man squad. If you look at it very well, because it has hand in all areas, the, the three areas it has executive function, it perform it, and judiciary. You also have a hand in it. That's why we are taking it number one. And you see that some people make the mistake of putting executive first before legislature. But if you want to go, you want to enumerate it from the beginning. We have to put it just like this. Legislature, the way I'm taking it now, executive before we have judiciary at the bottom. It's sequentially because this is the hierarchy of power. Or hierarchy of power. Four, we have control of the executive. How do they control the executive? The prime ministers, the president, how do they control it? This law that they make affects them. Number five correlates with number four. They have the power to impeach a president. Government has its own term. We don't say remove, we say impeach. So we impeach, the legislative has the power to impeach the president. So this is wrong. It's impeach. As a good government student, you use grammar for government, as our contemporary did. You impeach presidents or judge, judges are being removed while presidents are impeached. Now we're moving on to number six. In some countries like Britain, we see that the judicial function is tied with legislation. Legislation is the highest judicial of the country. Example is the House of Lords, whereby the Queen of England, her lady, or rather my lady, is the highest law making body which she supervises and her words are like the words of a monarch so it's taken as the highest judicial for the country so in some cases it depends on how the structure or how the country is being structured as the government legislation also undertake the functions of judiciary so now let's see it 
let me itemize. The functions of the legislature, basically we have these six. So people can, can give you more than six, but they are needless. This is summarizes everything a legislature do in a country. They make law number one. They approve appointments. Prime ministers, president, judges, they make approval of that. Three, they amend constitution in a country. They make law, they amend if necessary. Number four, they control legislature, which I say relate with number five whereby impeachment is made, they check and balance this separation of power, they remove president if needed, they impeach rather, and they remove judges. Number six, they carry judicial functions. So with this, we are done with the functions of the legislature, which is the first organ of government. Now we're moving on to executive, which is the second organ of government.